there's there's two things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about neoliberalism and new communists. All right, so what is neoliberalism? Neoliberalism, it favors the free market, deregulated economies, and increasing power to the private sector. In essence, it's the ideology and the philosophy of capitalism. You know, the very thing that communists are supposed to be against. Neoliberalism is the reason why the world is the way that it is. It's why we have neocolonialism, it's why we have G-sides, it's why we have uh, inter-imperialist conflicts. In essence, why the world is not such a great place. Neoliberalism is so pervasive, it's the default ideology of the world. It's the default ideology that people are raised with. The way we talk, the way we're expected to act, the way that we work. Media we watch, movies, Marvel movies, Prime TV, the food we eat. It's all under the thumb of neoliberalism. I think a lot of new communists get confused when they hear liberalism and neoliberalism. Because they're coming from a place where being a liberal was better than being conservative. When they don't understand that conservatism is under the umbrella of neoliberalism. So it wasn't really shocking when I saw my comrades were giving pushback to a new communist who was promoting Kamala Harris as the 2024 president of the United States. Now, I'm, I'm not, this is not about me telling you who to vote for. Don't vote for her. However, we sort of run into this problem with new communists, right? Who haven't unpacked their own personal liberalism. Of course, any communist, new or old, still has liberalism to unpack. I do. However, a lot of us who've been doing this for a while, we need to understand that we can't back down when a new communist is doing something that is damaging to the movement. Even if it comes from a place of ignorance. Ignorance just being the lack of knowledge. Liberalism is dangerous. Uh, it has no place in our movement. It's what we're supposed to be fighting against. So you take a lack of understanding state oppression, a neoliberal state oppression, and a lack of understanding theory, and you mold these together and you get a reformist. Because anyone can say they're a communist. Anybody can say that they are whatever they are. However, you have to prove it with your actions. You have to prove it with understanding. You can't just say after two months, you're a communist because there's so much that you don't already understand, which is fine. Everyone has to start somewhere. However, that doesn't excuse weaponizing liberalism consciously or unconsciously. You end up with somebody who only wants new management at the empire, not the empire taken down. We're going to talk about more of this on Collective Riyadh today at 5 p.m. EST. You can join me and a panel of my comrades where we're going to be looking at defining neoliberalism and talking about these issues that we see on the online left. Today, we're going to talk about what, Ivan? We're going to talk about neoliberalism and how dangerous it is. Neoliberalism and new communists. Uh, in the movement, um, particularly on the online left, um, how imperative it is to debunk your own neoliberalism, how to unpack it, what neoliberalism actually is, um, and why you're going to get mogged on if you've been a commie for only a few months and you're talking about some lip shit. So let's get into it. I'm going to read a quote from Combating Liberalism by Mao. People who are liberals look upon the principles of Marxism as abstract dogma. They approve of Marxism, but are not prepared to practice it or to practice it in full. They are not prepared to replace their liberalism by Marxism. These people have their Marxism, but they have their liberalism as well. They talk Marxism, but practice liberalism. They apply Marxism to others, but liberalism to themselves. They keep both kinds of goods in stock and find a use for each. This is how the minds of certain people work. So on that note, King Ivan. King Ivan. You know, the way. You're muted. Basically what Mal was saying there to the liberal was um, you liberals 
don't see Marxism as something concrete and material. They see it as, as he said, the, the abstract, as something that exists in the ether as opposed to a science. And when you take the science away from Marxism and you, do, you only maintain your liberalism, really all you're doing is currently placating the current world order. So what is the current world order? So the current world order is neoliberalism or the neoliberal world order. What the hell does that mean? So neoliberalism can be defined very basically as the economic and government policies that dictate capitalism. So that means like deregulated markets, less power to unions, um, deregulated industries, um, basically an emphasis on the free market in, and, and no government intervention. So neoliberalism is a little bit different from classical liberalism. Um, I could get into that, but I think we're going to keep it a little tight this time. Um, so neoliberalism really came about um, in the 1930s. And now what was going on in the 1930s? Soviet Union had uh, risen to power. It had um, basically won its civil war against the anarchists, against the uh, right wingers, you know, saboteurs. And the Soviets were in power. Now, this is a threat to Europe. This is a this is a threat to liberal Europe, who upholds capitalism. They're essentially neo colonies of the United States. So, what happens is you start to have uh, a counter in both directions. You have some nations like uh, Scandinavian nations, which start to be a little bit more socialist with their policies in order to not basically have revolts. And then you have other countries like the United States and the United Kingdom which do the opposite, where they basically double down on their ability to allow the free market to do what it does, to continue to uh, exist. So neoliberalism, the way that we understand it now, basically comes from the 1970s. So I have on here, really super simple, I'm just gonna read it. I um, really quick summary of like how neoliberalism got so popular. Uh, in the modern world from the angle of the United Kingdom, from Margaret Thatcher, may she rest in piss, and Ronald Reagan, who, who can also do the same. So, United Kingdom. During her tenure as Conservative Prime Minister from 1979 to 1990, Margaret Thatcher oversaw a number of neoliberal policies, including tax reduction. Now, who does that tax reduction towards? It's towards the rich. Exchange rate, reform, deregulation, and privatization. Remember, privatization, that term comes from Yahtzee Germany. That is a specifically a Nazi policy, is in companies are to being taken away from the national um, characteristic of the, of the nation and now made into private equity. There are, these policies were continued and supported by her successor, John Mayer, although opposed by the Labor Party. The policies were, according to some scholars, largely accepted and left unaltered when Labor returned to power in 1997. Um, yeah, so basically Margaret Thatcher and all her nonsense, she's kind of what brought uh, neoliberalism to the United Kingdom. And this is one of the reasons why the United Kingdom is in the condition that it is in today. Um, as much as we like to uh, dog on those Angloids over there in the United Kingdom, um, the United Kingdom in a lot of ways is a poor country for uh, the conditions of the regular proletariat over there. The United States. While a number of recent uh, historians of neoliberalism in the United States have traced its origins back to the urban renewal policies of the 1950s, Marxist economic uh, geographer uh, David Harvey argues the rise of neoliberal policies in the United States occurred during the 1970s energy crisis. So that was basically when the United States was having mad beef with Iran, and then Iran stopped selling oil to the United States um, and caused a major economic crisis here. Traces the origins of its political rise in Lewis Powell, 1971's conventional memorandum to the Chamber of Commerce in particular. The call to arms to the business community, the bourgeois, to counter criticisms of free enterprise systems, it was a significant factor in the rise of conservative and libertarian organizations and think tanks which advocated for neoliberal policies such as the Business Roundtable, the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, if you're a communist, you should have heard of all these already, Citizens for a Sound Economy, Accuracy in Academia, and the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research. For Powell, universities were becoming an ideological battleground, and he recommended the establishment of intellectual infrastructure to serve as a counterweight to his increasing popular ideas of Ralph Nader and other opponents of big business. 
The original neoliberals on the left include, among others, well, you don't need to get into them, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, the Clinton administration embraced neoliberalism by supporting the passage of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, which uh, basically, if you don't know what, uh, what NAFTA really is, um, it's basically, I'm just going to summarize it real quick. The United States gets a better cut of the deal in trade agreements between Mexico and Canada. That's what that is. Um, continuing the deregulation of the financial sector through the passage of Commodity Future Modernization Act and the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act and implementing cuts to the welfare state through the passage of the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act. The American historian Gary Gersel writes that while Reagan was the ideological architect of the neoliberal order, which was formulated in the 70s and 80s, it was Clinton who was a key facilitator as such this order achieved dominance in the 1990s and 2000s. Neoliberalism of the Clinton administration differs from that of Reagan as the Clinton administration purged neoliberalism of neoconservative positions on militarism, family values, opposition to multiculturalism, and neglect of ecological issues. Now, now, okay, so I just said a whole bunch of stuff right now. So the reason why this is so uh, important and pervasive, again, is because at the uh, beginning of World War Two, the United Kingdom essentially still was essentially the dominant empire of the world. It was in decline, but it still maintained most of its colonies. It still maintained most of its resources. But after World War II, uh, when, when Roosevelt decided to join the war, it was on condition that basically France and England would recognize that the United States is now the dominant hegemon and that the three of them could go against uh, the Soviet Union. And so if this, these are the economic policies that the United States is pushing, this is what is going to be expected amongst its colonies and neo-colonies. This is why now, today, we have rampant, unchecked capitalism, which is how capitalism goes. It will always go in that direction um, all over the world. This is why you have companies essentially run, quote, third world countries. This is why you have massive corporations that essentially pay for the United States government to operate and do what they want. Um, tech giants like Apple and Amazon, uh, weapons manufacturers like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, all of them essentially uh, constitute America government as corporations in a trench coat with a name tag that says government. That's basically why we're here, right? So all that being said, as communists, right, we oppose this. This is 101. As a communist, as a Marxist, you are supposed to be against the neoliberal world order. Neoliberal in terms moving away from economics and more of like actual like political policy. We're talking about in the states in particular, we're talking about Republicans and we're talking about Democrats. Republicans and Democrats are the same side of the same, are two sides of the same coin. They both back big business. They both back the bourgeois. They back the status quo. Sure, there are some ideological differences between the two of them. Some will see it as legitimate. Some will see it as uh, more like a game. But they essentially always back the same things when it matters. You'll see these people argue about uh, culture war things. Um, you know, the rights for certain individual people, rights for women and such, reproductive rights. But they always agree on war. They always agree on cutting taxes for the rich. They always agree at maintaining the U.S. as the top. That's why you say you see Kamala Harris saying she'll always uh, support the blue and white flag country uh, forever and ever because she's the same as Biden. Biden is the same as Trump. Trump is the same as Clinton. You understand what I'm saying. So we as communists not only believe in the, you know, what we call revolution, when it comes to revolution, yeah, people often think they think war, they think bombs, they think stuff like that. But we're also talking about revolution in the sense of the revolution of the mind, the revolution of the human condition, revolution of human society. And in order to facilitate that, it requires a removal and an expulsion of the ways of before. We're talking about a fundamental change to the way the human species operates, right? So when you have communists, who have not unpacked their neoliberalism, you are now essentially populating 
our movement with thoughts that do not belong in our movement. And when you go ahead and you start espousing those ideas, there's going to be pushback. And that pushback needs to come strong and it needs to be firm. And these people need to understand that the reason why so many of us are one by default because we're supposed to be against neoliberalism but we're opposed to neoliberalism because we have been on the other side of the american weapon and until you've had that happen i don't think a lot of these new kids on the block sort of understand that so that's why we decided to yap about this this is why i've yapped for the last 10 minutes um am i missing anything aria or you want me to pass no, it on you're good i i want to address that um people should really be paying close attention because wherever you are in your understanding, whether you're a beginner, whether you're advanced, um, it's important that you understand these things and really intake them and seek to understand them before you start talking about them. That's something I want to emphasize here. This is not a place for you to pick up talking points to regurgitate to your friends who call themselves leftists. This is not that space. Um, that said, welcome to our uh, live, someone we've never had before on the live, two people, Hells and Nico. Thank you for being a part of this live. Uh, your yeah, voices yeah. are really important. Um, Hells, can you talk a little bit about current things that go on, examples of liberalism that you see in your lives? Also, everyone should go follow Hells. They're a very principled communist. Often whenever I think about um, liberalism and like what is required for a revolution, right, where we are attempting to educate people who have been fed red scare propaganda their entire lives, who cannot define words like capitalism or communism. Education is so much of um, what we use TikTok as a tool for. And so the tendencies of new communists or people who haven't um, deconstructed their liberal tendencies is that we're perpetuating and upholding this bourgeois system that continues to harm people and prevents us from furthering the movement and the revolution. So like briefly, some examples that I see are not acknowledging the contradiction of white supremacy in the United States class reductionism. Um, and this allows for a lot of lateral violence and, and harm to marginalized communities, those people who are most exploited by the capitalist superstructure. Um, then whenever that is sometimes called out, like as Bao says, we, we as communists need to hold a principled line and call out this kind of liberal tendency as we see it. There's a refusal to acknowledge this critique um, and to really double down in these stances of class reductionism. Um, there, in, in the past couple of weeks, I've seen a lot of instances where people want to hold their comfortability. And this again is a tactic of white supremacy and a tendency of liberalism where we want to protect the comfortability of all people in the live whether that be liberals who are on looking or even the person who is receiving the critique instead of allowing the critique to be heard and for the behavior or the tendencies to be addressed fully. Um, I think there's probably a, a few more tendencies that we could go through, but I, I do think that that is primarily what is causing a lot of damage to the movement and to our spaces. Do you mind if I say something real quick? Please. Um, I like a lot what you said about like a lot of this sort of liberal tendencies is to maintain the comfort of of live hosts and other people who who are new to the movement. Um, that's one hundred percent true. And I want to address something that was said to us the other day, which was um, basically we have to be respectful, and respect leads into respectability politics. Respectability politics come from neoliberalism and white supremacy because those of us who have been victims of american empire we don't owe you respect we have to be principled in the way we address these things but we don't owe you respect 
because a lot of these people come in here and with their liberalism, like we're saying, and haven't unpacked it, and they're so scared of being wrong and so scared of being called out that they seek almost in a way, in, in a weird way, it, it's almost like the conservative liberals have a correct way in thinking when they say, like they talk about safe spaces. Be yes, we believe in safe spaces, like collective like Riyadh is a safe space, right? But when you are using language and words that are fundamentally against us, those words that turn into bullets, we don't owe you respect. Exactly. I, I want to jump in for a minute. I'm not going to address the person by name, but I'm going to say that if you're here and you're requesting, your request is not going to be approved because in this space, you have to earn respect. So you can stay and listen and learn, and I hope that you do, and I hope that you approach it with a open mind because we're telling you things you need to learn. So we'll go on, Ivan. No, that's pretty much what I have to say. I'm going to hand it back to, to health. We have to remember that as communists, even though we are not a part of an organization and we're doing this online and it can feel very casual or impersonal, we are a part of a movement to create socialism and revolution. And that movement must be protected. You have to hold a principled line and know what you're talking about in order to effectively communicate these ideas and to push the movement forward um, with the especially white communists who are hosting TikTok lives, we need to remember what role we play in the liberation of those who are most exploited and marginalized by the current system. We cannot continue to uphold these superstructures of bourgeois politic and capitalism. We have to turn away from the establishment. Um, Huey P. Newton talks a lot about the role of white liberals versus white, re or white revolutionaries. And it's very clear. We need to understand our place in this process and do what we can to protect the movement and hold that principled line. Thanks, Hals. Yeah, thank you. Um, did you want to read that piece that you were talking about earlier? Because you can if you'd like to. I'm happy to read a little bit of it. Let me pull it up really quick. OK. If anybody else wants to jump in for a minute, feel free. Yeah, um, I think especially uh, white communists, y'all need to understand that um, it's your role to convince your fellow white people that liberation movements benefit them and that they should be on our side and they're more inclined to listen to you, especially mass presenting white men, than people who look like me or the women and femme presenting people on the panel. So if when we're telling you these things again it's not coming from a place of like oh we're trying to be mean it's that this this path leads to destruction and if we read Huey P. Newton if you read revolutionary suicide you'll understand that and if you don't understand that then you shouldn't be doing this i want to take a moment to just address something that i broadly see um which is people that are new wanting to prove themselves right that's a very normal feeling to feel like i want to show people that i know what i'm talking about but that is the wrong approach of the communist you have to look at communism in terms of what can i contribute and if i am not the person to contribute that i need to be able to step aside and i also need to understand that if i put myself out there that i'm representing communism and that I need to be able to take accountability public if I'm making a critique of somebody publicly and also understand the intersectional connection between the people that you're speaking with and how you might be overstepping something. It takes a minute to dial all the things in. That's why we're encouraging you to take a beat and try to absorb more before you start doing lives. It's not something you can master overnight. It's not something you can learn because you have a certain following. It's not something you can learn by reading one book or having a conversation with your friend. You can learn bits and pieces of that, but it takes an openness and a willingness to continually challenge your ego to do the work that we're speaking about. Are you ready, Hells? Yes, yes. Uh, bear okay. with me, it's about 10 sentences. So this is from Huey P. Newton. I think this was written in 1968. 
I personally think there are so many young white revolutionaries who are sincere in attempting to realign themselves with mankind and to make a reality out of the moral, moral standards that their fathers and forefathers had only expressed. In pressing for new heroes, the young white revolutionaries found the heroes in the black colony at home and in the colonies throughout the world. The young white revolutionaries raised the cry for the troops to withdraw from Vietnam, hands off Latin America, withdraw from the Dominican Republic, and also withdraw from the black community or the black colony within the United States. So you have a situation in which the young white revolutionaries are attempting to identify with the oppressed people of the colonies and against the exploiter. The problem arises then in what part they can play. How can they aid the colony? How can they aid the Black Panther Party or any other black revolutionary group? They can aid the black revolutionaries first by simply turning away from the establishment. And secondly, by choosing their friends. For instance, they have a choice between whether they will be a friend to the Lyndon B. Johnsons or a friend of Fidel Castro, a friend of Robert Kennedy or a friend of Ho Chi Minh. And these are direct opposites, a friend of mine or a friend of Johnson's. After they make this choice, then the white revolutionaries have a duty and a responsibility to act. Thank you for reading that. Um, give me one moment. Um, yeah, I haven't already addressed it, but let's not go back and forth in the comments. This is a learning space. So if you have things that you want to say or address with somebody, address it with them at another time, please. Um, we were talking a bit about um, contradictions uh, between uh, neoliberalism and communism. Do you want to elaborate some more on that, Ivan, if you're able to? Yeah. So, all right. So when we when we talk about um, you know the definition of communism, right? Let's let's start there. My camera's all weird. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. I had to take my phone off the stand. I don't know why it's not staying on. But anyway, so. When we talk about the definition of communism, right? A lot of people start with, it's the stateless, moneyless, classless society, uh, brouhaha. Communism is a doctrine of the liberation of the proletariat. It is the liberating policies and procedure of the working people of the planet, okay? So again, when we're, just, when we're discussing that, when you take something like that, and now you apply it to the concept of revolution. What is revolution? What, as a word, what does revolution mean? Revolution means a great change. We're talking about not just war. War is going to happen because the, those who control society are going to do everything they can uh, to basically prevent them from losing power, right? However, again, we're not just talking about bang, bang, boom, boom. We're talking about the complete and fundamental change of human society and that is why liberalism needs to be expunged from ourselves not just society and this includes me this includes everyone on the panel we all have our sorry my headphone died i'm having all kinds That's of right. issues That's um, fine. We're, we're all having um we all have neoliberalism to unpack right but when you are fresh off the boat you have to understand that just because maybe you read a few books or you watch some YouTube videos or even listen to the collective podcast doesn't mean you have a complete understanding. We don't even have a complete understanding. So you certainly don't. So you cannot be out here hosting TikTok lives that are detrimental to what we're doing. And this is why you need to take the time to learn, it's not gonna happen overnight. I understand a lot of young people are very excited, but a lot of young people get excited and they get themselves killed. Um, I kind of went on a tangent, so I kind of really didn't answer the question. But um, basically, when it comes to Marxism, when we're talking about the fundamental changing of the economy, right? So we're talking about like, you know, equitable healthcare, uh, we're talking about funding infrastructure, funding universities. On an economic level, neoliberalism does not support any of that. So 
having liberal tendencies on an economic level does not work in 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 communist spaces. Does anybody want to add to that, Nico? Anyone? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, you want to add to that? Sorry, were you guys waiting? I, I was kind of waiting to see if anyone else was going to say uh, anything. Yeah, feel free. At Jump the moment, in. I, I was like, I don't necessarily have much to add, but one one thought that always pops in my head is like, you know, you. You're not a communist just because you read the Communist Manifesto. Like that's that's such a bare bones thing, and you really have to be willing to do that work to get to the point. Honestly, like for me personally, I didn't start calling myself a communist until like two years in to reading and engaging with other people. I mean, I'm gonna take it a step further. Um, you're not a communist just because you call yourself a communist. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you're not a communist when you call yourself a leftist. You're not a communist when you don't act in principled ways, when you're not willing to do the work, when you don't understand and accept within yourself that people have been unalived historically for being a communist. And that wave, that red wave that happened in the McCarthy area, that is happening. That's coming. So you need to understand the commitment you're making before you uh, nonchalantly say I'm a communist, because yeah, you have, and you're you're gonna be watched. It's not a costume. It's not a tag that you put on your profile just to and like it means something, and you got to commit to it if you're gonna say it. Yeah, and, and exactly. Go on, Nico. No, I was going to I was going to say real quick, like we have to remember that, you know, communism is a science. Science isn't learned overnight. We have to learn how to apply it and then apply it. And that takes time. And if you're someone who is coming into this and thinking you can take something in really quickly and understand how to apply it, like through dialectical materialism and such, like you're obviously <clears throat> practicing liberalism in that sense, because it's it is a sense of urgency, like an individualism that comes from liberalism and white supremacy culture. Absolutely. Thank you for that point, Nico. You know, I think a lot of it, exactly what you said, but like a lot of it, I think of like, you, especially if you've been born in the U.S., you are taught and like it is integrated into your learning from the time you are born to support and uphold capitalism, to speak and think in liberal ways. So if you think about it like that, you have to understand that it's not going to be a day, two months, three months before you can unpack this. People are going to be at different levels with that understanding. You have to be okay with the commitment that you are still learning. And you have to be intellectually honest about that. That matters to us because if you are not, you are putting us all at risk. And that should be a responsibility you don't take lightly. Um, Let's see, where are we? You know, do you guys want to talk a little bit about like government awareness infiltration stuff? I mean, I touched on the McCarthy era, but. Yeah, it's <clears throat> um, You can lead if you want to, Ivan. We have to understand that the, the bourgeois, the government, whatever, is going to use whatever they can to disrupt our movements. And especially like you have to you have to you have to get it through your head that we're doing this on a public forum on electronic devices that are being recorded okay so what this is not clandestine whatever whatsoever so you have to consider the reality that there may be some people who might be paid to disrupt these online spaces and what better way to do that on a TikTok live with government money in order to get a lot more viewers in there where now you can kind of either a dissuade the movement or b co-op the movement in such a way that makes it sellable to the bourgeois but not in a way that will uh 
you know, we 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 got a, a quick one under them in a way that oh yeah, communists, real communists support Kamala Harris. If you don't, then you're not a real communist. And that breeds uh, an environment in which we can't even have a discussion about again the the general changing of human society if we can't even get past the first hurdle being we don't support the american president no matter who it is that's different from a strategic move but we can't have that conversation unless you understand this yeah i mean another thing i think about is how like you know, often on TikTok, people are so quick to want to come in and, like, correct someone, and they completely derail a conversation. Um, and they don't realize in their intent that their intent may be there, but they're essentially doing a liberalism by trying to correct someone when the, the larger picture is that we're addressing something, uh, for example, with someone that is a, a POC is speaking on uh, something that they've experienced and how that relates back to capitalism having discussion with someone that's actually harmful in the comments like if you interrupt that that's problematic even if your reason for interrupting it is that you see something that they're doing that you think is problem like is problematic to you there's levels to it like obviously we don't support racism here we don't uphold that white supremacy bullshit but there's levels to that that some new communists may not understand and are still like learning about. And so, you know, it's it's important to understand that like, if you're aware, it's, it's good to observe is basically what I would say. Observe before you jump in the pool because you might jump in a pool with sharks, essentially. I'd like like Hells to elaborate on that if you don't mind Hells, because I think you can bring more clarity to what I'm saying. Definitely. Um... We have to acknowledge that we are in a public space, like Ivan said, and there will be lateral harm. Um, even if the conversation that you're having isn't about race, you don't have um, like a white supremacist talking point on the background. The actions that you take, that people on your panel take, especially if they are a moderator in your space and you've chosen them or elected them to be a, a director of what goes on in your space, you should be shutting down any chance for people to be harmed. Um, if there are tendencies of white supremacy, like we mentioned earlier, like Arya mentioned, um, this prioritization of liberals comfortability over the principles of communism and decolonialism and deconstruction of white supremacy, you need to shut it down. Um, this is about not just protecting your reputation or your life from getting bananaed. It's about holding a principled line because this is protecting the movement and it's protecting the people who are going to be harmed um, even if it's unintentionally. I think we also see that often we have hosts who want to allow these conversations to continue longer than they should for clout, for views, because as soon as people start yelling in TikTok lives, you see the numbers go up, the comments are rolling, and it's very exciting. But we have to remember that you are giving a platform for people to cause harm, to uphold beliefs that have very real consequences for very real people, not just in the United States, but globally. And this is primarily black and brown people. So especially as a new young white communist, you need to understand your role in this process. Um, I think one other thing that I would love to touch on that I see commonly from new communists is this idea of idealism and wanting to believe that anarcho-communism is the superior way to debate communism from a very philosophical, idealistic stance that the idea that there can be a moneyless, classless, stateless society without a revolution that is protected by a state that has a monopoly on violence will not educate people on the very material reality of what being a communist means and allows these kinds of tendencies to 
permeate all of our conversations and they just start to grow and get out of control. So whenever communists are telling you that what you're saying is harmful or unprincipled, it's because we are protecting the movement. It is not personal. Um, you should take the critique and address your behavior or reflect, take some time away from hosting a live and really sit with what it means to be a communist and decide if you are prepared to hold, to march hand in hand with us as we create this revolution, or you can go back to being a liberal because we will not miss you. Agreed. Um, I want to put out another facet of this that I have witnessed is that a communist will be making headway in a conversation uh, with a, a non-communist, an op, and another communist in their need to feel self-important, um, you know, uh, connected to the conversation, clout, what have you. Essentially, it's all ego shit will come in and start to correct that person and be doing blatant anti-communism in that live, in a room full of opposition, that is problematic. There's nothing wrong with, we need to be principled, we need to hold each other accountable, but you need to also learn how to do that in a way that is principled, where you're not exposing the communist community to more harm in that sense. Because that's like another thing that I'm seeing. I don't know if you experienced that at all, Hells, but it's something that I have for sure witnessed. I think there's two flavors of spaces that can be created on the same platform, right? You can have a very nuanced discussion about the intricacies of Marxism, about what it means to be a communist, about what our principles are and how we want to facilitate the live and have critique happen. But you cannot allow opposition or bourgeois politic to infiltrate those conversations because you'll start like you can't let ops up while we're having an a communist comrade conversation um it's just harmful right and and i want to you know also have sell you know emphasize this point that y'all are making which is an excellent point um right like we cannot okay so like obviously collective you know, we we run an organization and it is imperative that on a public facing platform that we are unified in what we are saying and that self-criticism can come in private. Now, I know a lot of you all aren't in organizations and I know new communists aren't in new organizations. They're here on TikTok, right? But if somebody is swaying somebody else, communist is swaying a liberal, there is no need for you to go against your fellow communist because you're trying to save face because you want to feel like your your what you're getting out of tiktok is is um more valuable than the movement and i think i see a lot of this kind of behavior in lives in general because the reality is is that we pull in a lot of people who are lost who are dissuaged who are you know, bashed and bloodied from the tra traumas of life, and they're looking for a community. But you need to understand that this is not a clubhouse, okay? This is this is serious life and death shit. So it may not seem like it to you because you're on a little fun TikTok live, but this is only the beginning of of what is to come. So you need to put aside your own pride, and I need to do the same thing. Listen, I have a big ego, but you need to put aside your pride. And understand that people are not going to always like you, that your comrades are not always going to like you. But if you remain principled, even when you have disagreement with your comrades, they will still be your comrade if they are also principled. Not every comrade is your friend, and not every friend is a comrade. And I think we all need to remember that. Agreed. I also want to piggyback off that and say that... Um... Lost my train of thought. So what I was going to say, <laughs> give me a sec. So um, like when it comes to friends, right? People that you surround yourself with in close proximity, your friends have to be honest with you. Your friends have to be able to call you out if they're communists. They have to be able to do that. And you have to be able to do the same. And if you are, if you have friends around you that you can't agree with because you're afraid of upsetting them, there's work you got to do there. And there's work they got to do there. 
And like, I am seeing a lot of people carry that like liberal mentality that you need to like, as we've already talked about, but more specifically, you need to cater to me. No, no. Principle is principle. It's not about catering to people. It's obviously you also don't need to be a fucking total asshole. You know, there's a there's a there's a spectrum here. And essentially, if you don't know, there's nothing wrong with hitting up a, a communist that you respect and asking them for their advice. And you know what? Ask a few. This is the way that we are able to extract information about how we can do things better, extract that like feedback and internalize it, integrate it into our own behavior. We don't learn in a bubble. And to the point of community, your perception and approach to this should be what can I contribute rather than what can I get out of the situation? Exactly. Um, we have any, um, I know we've been talking a lot. What about uh, you, Nico? I know you haven't really said a whole lot. Yeah, of I know Nico had happening. some things they wanted to share. Go on, Nico. I mean, at this point, like, I, I fully agree. Like, I, I feel that um, because of the society we were raised in, a lot of us look for community, but we have been, like, with that individualist liberal mindset, kind of uh, have too much pride to realize when we need to take in information and educate ourselves. And that's part of critiquing ourselves. Um, you know, like Aria said, like community is what can you do for the community, not the other way around. And uh, I think a lot of people operate in a way where they say that they uh, support community, but they're still operating like an individualist. I mean, you can read the, the chat logs in this very live and see that people often come in here without actually listening and are demanding answers to questions, not paying attention to what we're actually speaking on. This is labor that we're putting out for you guys. This takes time out of all of our days. It takes meeting time. It means, it means that we're organizing to have this live. And I'm not saying that to be condescending. What I'm saying that is imagine that you have to do that. I, I It's kind of interesting to me that i have to say that but i feel the need to say it imagine that you had to do all of that organization do you want people to come in and start asking you about unrelated things or do you want people to respect the time and space that you're setting aside to educate complete strangers because you see that there is something going on in your community that is harmful please understand that when you come in specific you should be treating all lives this way all communist lives you should be treating this way but specifically this life i'm going to call it out and i'm not going to name you by name because i'm not trying to give you clout but just don't do that please it's not helpful um that was a little bit of a derail i apologize but um where were we did you want to talk did you want to do some reading nico i know you had a couple of things that you brought to the table yeah, no, um, right now I can do the whole reading of that little section of um, How to Be a Good Communist by Liu Xiaoqi. Um, okay. I think it's a really important thing, especially like we're talking about like this principled line that we have um, to like listen to this and realize like that even though I'm talking about e the party's interest, like this is just the principled line that all communists should have. So um, it starts, this little section starts off at, um, at all times and all questions, a party member should give first consideration to the interest of the party as a whole and put them in the foremost and place personal matters and interests second. The supremacy of the party's interests is the highest principle that must govern the thinking and actions of the members of our party. In accordance with this principle, every party member must completely identify his personal interests with those of the party, both in his thinking and in his actions of the members of our party, both in his thinking and in his actions. He must be able to yield to the interests of the party without he any hesitation or reluctance and sacrifice his personal interests, whatever of the two at, are, at, are at variance. Unhesitating readiness to sacrifice personal interests and even one life for the party and for the proletariat and for the emancipation of the nation and all of mankind. This is one expression of what we usually describe as party spirit, party sense, or sense of organization. It is the highest expression of communist morality, of the principled nature of the party of the proletariat and of the purest proletarian class consciousness. 
Members of our party should not have personal aims which are independent of the party's interests. Their personal aims must harmonize with the party's interests. If the aim they set for themselves is to study Marxist-Leninist theory, to develop their ability and work, to establish revolutionary organizations, and to lead the masses in successful revolutionary struggles. If their aim is more to do more for the party, then this personal aim harmonizes with the interests of the party. The party needs such many such members and cadres. Apart from this aim, party members should have no independent personal motives, such as attaining personal fame or playing the individual hero. Otherwise, they will depart from the interests of the party and may even become careerists within the party. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, did you want to elaborate that on that a bit, or do you feel like it's self-explanatory? I feel like it's self-explanatory, like, but I will say, like, when I'm when they're talking about the party here in this context, we're talking about our principled line, and uh, like it says, like, there is going, like, you have to be ready at all points, like, you have to have a readiness and a self-sacrifice for the emancipation of all mankind, and if you're not at that point, you need more work. You need to do more work. You need to educate yourself more. And there's no there's no shame in that. I just want to put that out there. Like that's something we have to be able to embrace, you know. And if you're around people that shame you because of that, you might not be around the right people. And chances are you're probably not actually around communists. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna agree, but with a caveat. That's fine. Hit it. That doesn't mean that you can be called out and be like, "But I'm learning. But I'm learning." Take the L, dog. Exactly. Just take take the L. L. I would say that's like the theme of the day. I agree with that. Um, so, go on. Uh, I, I was gonna say, keep in mind it is in, it is okay to be wrong. You are going to be wrong sometimes. Do not double down and start attacking if you get called out for being wrong. Look for the resources to come to the correct point. The other thing that I see that happens is people will get critiqued on something or they come up and try to do a critique and they get corrected by people that might be more advanced. And then they run off to a discord server or they run off to another live and rant about that and paint the story as if they are the victim. That's noticed. I just want to put all of the people that do that. You're on notice. We watch that. We pay attention to those people. Those are the people that nobody wants to organize with. And so the the correct response when you're being critiqued is to try to intake it. If there are questions, ask questions. If you want to have a sidebar with someone about it, ask, you know, consent for that. Like that's that's things that most people are willing to do with you. But what people don't want to do is continually engage with people that are disingenuous. And because they have the label of communist that they're throwing on themselves, they think that makes it okay. We notice that stuff. I do want to quickly note that like that, what Aria just said is the the fifth type of liberalism that is discussed in combat liberalism. Um, you're, you're basically struggling, um, entering into argument and struggling against incorrect views for the sake of unity or progress or to get work done properly. Yeah, I mean, combat liberalism, I think, is something that everyone should read. Um, I don't think you have to be a Maoist to read Mao. He definitely elaborated on these ideas and the and the, like what it means to be principled in ways that I have personally found helpful. Um, to that note, uh, Health, did you have anything that you wanted to read that you haven't already covered? I think there is a passage from what is to be done that I would like to read. Um, so, and it's, this one's a shorter one. Um, Go on. We are marching in a compact group along a precipitous and difficult path, firmly holding each other hand by the hand. We are surrounded on all sides by enemies and we have to advance almost constantly under fire. We have combined by a freely adopted decision for the purpose of fighting the enemy and of not retreating into the neighboring marsh, the inhabitants of which from the very outset have reproached us 
with having separated ourselves into an exclusive group and with having chosen the path of struggle instead of the path of conciliation. And now some among us begin to cry out, let us go into the marsh. And where we begin to shame them, they retort, what backward people you are. Are you not ashamed to deny us the liberty to invite you to take a better road? Oh yes, gentlemen, you are free not only to invite us, but to go yourselves wherever you will, even into the marsh. In fact, we think that the marsh is your proper place and we are prepared to render you every assistance to get there. Um, I, I like this passage because it basically says you have a choice to choose to be principled, to be in community with people who will hold you to those principles and to move, move toward revolution. Um, you also have the choice not to, and please do not um, be a revolutionary in, in virtue signal that you're a part of a movement. Um, just be honest about what your intentions are and what you're willing to do for the movement. Yeah. I think that's a good, a good place to sort of wrap things up. Um, I really appreciate everyone that came on today and I appreciate the people that listen every single time we do this live. Cause as I said, it is. Sorry about um, that. Okay, I'll, I'll take <laughs> no, I was just going to say it is effort for us to do. And we do put planning into this and we attempt to address things that are ongoing, both in TikTok and in the world and, you know, within our own uh, smaller circles. Um, yeah, I just want to say that. But Ivan, go on. I'd like no, you to close. I, I, I was just going to um, carry it on because I thought you were, you know, something happened. But, um, yeah, so um for those who have stayed and listened um for the particular individual who inspired this change in our re today we are still here uh i hope you take what we're saying seriously and you change a new grow because the reality is, is if you if if you continue to do what you're doing you are going to meet more and more opposition um until you're not in these spaces at all um, because you you will be a threat to the movement. And that goes for anybody. And that goes to the rest of y'all who are watching. If you see this unprincipled behavior, you do have a responsibility in speaking up. And it doesn't mean you go ahead and do something bananas. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that if you are a communist, and obviously everyone has time, has their own issues and time and work and whatever, but if you if you have the opportunity to educate someone to do it don't just sit on the bleachers anymore neoliberalism is what's wrong with society and we it has no place in our movement that's what i got to say oh you know what actually yeah here we go let's do this um the collective stance on it i think is pretty pretty obvious Neoliberalism has no move, has no place in our in our arena. We are Marxist Leninists. We are Marxist Leninist organization. This is we stand for Marxist Leninism. We stand for the liberation of all proletariat around the world, the destruction of American Empire, the destruction of the neoliberal world order, and destruction of white supremacy. And that's really it. Uh, I would call that a wrap. Thank you to everybody. Please follow these people also. And I Thanks hope you for having me. Yeah, anytime, Hells. It was great anytime. having you on here, Hells. Yeah, and Nico as well. And Nico yeah, was a part of our cadre and um, is not always on these types of lives, but took time out of their day to bring focus, attention, and awareness to things that we need to be focused, attentive, and aware of. So thanks, Nico. Anyway, you yahoos, go home, do whatever you got to do, but this this is closing down. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Mm -hmm. See y'all.